Psalm 103 is, bless the Lord, all my soul. Beautiful, beautiful scripture. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. All my soul. All, and I say, praise the Lord, all my soul. It is interesting that David, or the psalmist, said, bless the Lord, or praise the Lord, all my soul. You know, soul is the deepest part of our person soul and spirit and it's not this is obviously not saying that you just bless the lord out of your obligation out of your what you should do and this obviously bless the lord all my soul meaning bless the lord from your heart you're willingly and you want it to be and it is something about beautiful when i first read that bless the lord all my soul the thing that strikes me is bless the lord from the deepest part of my being, hallelujah. That's deeply within me. I can sort of, a little bit of fuse this, uh, coming, coming out from my deepest part of in my emotion and everything. It's absolutely cleansing, I'm telling you. It's absolutely cleansing and rejuvenating, rejuvenating <laughs> and renewing. There's something about power of praise and blessing the Lord because that's what we're called for. You know, because one was, when, one, when we start doing that, in the process of that, our spirit is renewed. Our covenant is renewed. Our posture changes for the rest of the day because we begin to connect with the Almighty God, our Creator. Praise the Lord, bless the Lord. People think sometimes, question, why does the Lord always call us to blessing and praising? It sounds, some people have read this, it's such an ego egoistic God or something, but it's absolutely not true. Because once, when we're doing that, something happened within us. We're restored to our, the image of God. We're just much happier. We're much joyful, much more peaceful. The love, the joy, the peace floods our soul. You know, beca begins to come in. We need to take our eyes off from ourselves and our difficulties and, and, the, and the challenges around about us. What well, we need to focus on the Lord, our Creator. And I will give you the reasons why do we bless the Lord, all oh, my soul. This Psalm start is talking to himself. Psalmist or David is talking to himself. Bless the Lord, all oh, my soul. It's not like, hey, me, bless the Lord. Come on, bless the Lord. No, it's bless the Lord, all oh, my soul. You know, so when you go to church to worship God, to praise the Lord, don't just praise with the mouth and the head, knowledge and all this. And but bless the Lord and praise the Lord from your soul. All oh, my soul. <clears throat> and what are the reasons? The first reason is bless the Lord, all oh, my soul, verse 2. And forget not all his benefits. It's so easy to begin to praise the Lord and bless the Lord. When you begin to recount what the Lord has done for you, what the Lord has blessed you, your heart just well up in thanksgiving. You know, sometimes your prayers don't answer you. It's fine. Come on. You know, he's already answered so many of your prayers in his ways. In the midst of doing that, he actually changes some of the direction and courses. I'm sure you understand that because you don't get everything you ask for because you'll be in trouble if you, if you get everything you ask for because the Lord, the Lord knows better, right? So it is a really important thing for us to understand that. So when you begin to recite, to recall what the Lord has done for you, has blessed you, your heart just well up in joy and celebration and thanksgiving. That's, that's, that's what it means, forget not all his benefits. And it's so easy to bless the Lord. So when you bless the Lord, think about what the Lord has done for you and doing for you. And verse 3 says, who, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases. Okay, so let's go to the NIV. It's better, easier. Who forgives all your sins. Think about that. All your sins being forgiven in Christ, not by your good deeds. All your sins being forgiven in Christ and heals all your diseases. Now, nobody can go and come and tell me the diseases is a, is a metaphor for spiritual diseases. You know, that is, let me tell you this, that's physical. As hard as it is to expound many times, but that's what it says. We have to stand by it, okay? Because verse four, verse three says, who forgives your sins and heals all your diseases. 
The sins is a spiritual part, of, which is the deepest part of our soul. And then he, God also, the Lord also has, who heals all our diseases, all the diseases, our, our, in spirit, our physical infirmities, our physical sickness, the Lord heals us. Now, of course, there are Christians that are not experiencing healing, you know, um, not completely or some part of it. But just give thanks to everything you have received. All right, don't, don't point at the things that you have not received. Perhaps, you know, I have no answer. The Lord, the, the scripture says here that the Lord heals all your diseases. All the diseases you can think of. He's capable of and he can heal all the diseases. Now, the disease is not just physical, but in, in America today especially, we have this mental disease. We have this uh, uh, mental, mental and uh, mental, physical, emotional. Oh, there's another one. Emotional disease, um, heartbroken, emotional abuse and physical abuse in all the wretchedness of the brokenness and sins of the world, the darkness of the world the Lord heals them that's why the gospel message is so powerful in Christ Jesus brings healing bring restoration brings hope and brings peace brings, brings forgiveness oh man that's why church is supposed to be the, the most attractive place to gather together on Sabbath day which is Sunday you know we have to gather together to celebrate and give thanks and praise and bless the Lord all my soul Hallelujah. What else? Okay. Verse 4. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. So we are from the pit. You know, the pit of what? Depravity. The pit of darkness. The pit of self-pity. The pit of uh, anger and unforgiveness. Selfishness. Horror, horror things that we see around the world. And everything that is happening... The newspaper will show you every day. Oh boy, the abominations happen in the world. The abortions uh, and uh, transgenderism on the march. And uh, all this are defying the very image of God. So all these are coming or hitting us. But the Lord redeem earth, redeems us from the pit and crowns us, crowns us with love and compassion. The Lord doesn't even just, the Lord does not even only deliver us from the pit and leave us out of the pit and leave, it, leave us there. But He crowns us with uh, love and compassion. And the word psalmist used here is crown. It's like you are a king, you're a royal priesthood. No wonder the Bible said we are the royal priesthood, right? Uh, we are crowned. Hallelujah. Why can't why don't why can't you bless the Lord oh my soul hearing all these things? Hallelujah. This is a mighty powerful thing. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. So that your youth is renewed like an eagle. Oh boy, like the eagles. The Lord satisfies our desires with good things. You see? Don't come and tell me that people that we are super spiritual float in the cloud and we don't look for the blessing who satisfaction from the Lord. Look for it, folks, and believe in it. But just don't slide into the uh, prosperity mindset. The Lord rewards those who goes after him, who seek after him. See, the, Jesus says, seek him and you shall find him. You see, you have to do something. You know, it doesn't just drop from the sky. You know, it says your youth, the Lord satisfies you. Oh, Rakati, the Lord satisfies you. I'm telling you this. Let me conclude to now. There's nothing that satisfies like how the Lord satisfies us. You can go after all the world, the sex, the parties, and the drunk, the drink, the drunkenness, and all the, the world called fun. They will not satisfy you deep down. And any satisfaction from huge amount of money, etc., or pleasure, sensuals of the world, they are temporal. They will not last. See all the rich people, a lot of them divorce, and Tom Brady is going through that right now. I mean, just so many things are happening. I'm not saying the Christians don't experience that, but we have to walk in the Lord, and the Lord will bless us and protect us. God bless you. Amen.